and peace be upon you. Thank you for watching. This is part three of the brief commentary on Surah Al-Baqarah. Please refer to uh, parts one and two for more details. So in parts one and two, we discussed a general overview of Surah Al-Baqarah. Today we will start taking parts from the surah, starting with the first ruba. Um, and uh, as we all know, Surah Al-Baqarah starts with Alif Lam Mim. These uh, dissociated letters that you can see in multiple surahs, Alif Lam Mim, Ha Mim, Kaf Ha Ya'in Sad, different uh, chapters of the Quran have these dissociated letters. And scholars say that uh, this is a, a challenge for the Arabs, that these are the letters that make up your language. Uh, and the Quran is made up from these letters. While the Quran is a challenge for you, here are the letters and here is the Quran. If you really doubt that this is the word of Allah, then go ahead and use these letters and come up with uh, a work that uh, could be a rival for the Quran. Uh, come up with a work that uh, could challenge the Quran. As you will see, this challenge will come soon. Uh, in the page, page number three of uh, Surah Al-Baqarah, when Allah says, oh, if you are in doubt uh, about what I have revealed to my servant, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, then uh, come forth with a chapter that is similar to any chapter of the Quran and so on. Um, and then Allah uh, talks about the Quran right away and usually you see that when the chapter starts with these dissociated letters shortly after that or immediately after that there will be a mention of the Quran because as I mentioned the stronger opinion with regards to these letters is that Allah is challenging the Arabs to produce something like the Quran and then Allah talks about his book it is a guidance for those who uh, are conscious of Allah. Muttaqeen can mean those who are conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who regard Allah, fear Allah. But it also applies to anyone and everyone who is conscious of the consequences of his actions. Yes, the Quran is a guidance for those who fear Allah and those who, are, who have already embraced Islam. But the Quran is also a guidance to those who have not yet embraced Islam, such as uh, if somebody uh, is a polytheist or someone is on another religion but Islam, but he is quite keen uh, to know the way of God because all Allah's creation, within them they have the instinct and intuition that they have a creator and that this creator has brought them here for a purpose and that uh, they should try to seek what the purpose and their job in life is. So anyone who thinks in that way, he is trying to find the path of the truth, the path of salvation, the path of the proper conduct in this life, is trying to know what the, his destiny will be and trying to improve his destiny, he would, be, he would fall under the category of the muttaqeen because he is afraid of any bad and awful consequences and awful endings. So he, he is trying to flee from such a bad consequence by seeking the truth. And those people as well, the Quran is a guidance uh, for them as well. Uh, but also the Quran is only a guidance for someone who is ready to believe the unseen. That is why the next verse says, الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بالغيب. So if somebody is a total materialist, he only believes in what he can perceive with his senses, such as what he can see or touch or smell or hear, and, and is uh, stubborn and arrogant and denies the existence of anything else that he cannot sense, then he is far away from the guidance of the Qur'an. Why? Because this person is actually contradicting his own self. He, in every aspect of life, uh, acknowledges the presence of many unseen items. 
he uses electricity, which is basic electrons running in wires, and, he, and no one has ever, ever seen an electron, but we've only perceived its effects. Um, this same uh, person uh, knows that there are seven different uh, spectra of light, um, although when he looks at the light, it looks white to him, but he knows that it is formed of seven different spectra. He knows uh, the effects of gravity, that there's a gravity, gravitational force. Uh, he knows there's an electromagnetic force. He knows these things exist, but he cannot really actually sense them with his senses. He cannot touch it. He cannot see them. He cannot see, see, see these items or touch them or smell them. But he knows them from, the, from their effects. So if somebody says, no, I only believe in what I can perceive with my senses, number one, he is a liar because he does believe so many items that he cannot actually perceive with the senses through their effects. And number two, he would not be uh, eligible or qualified or ready to receive guidance from the Quran because the Quran points our attention to the many signs of the Creator. The Creator is unseen, and no one will see the Creator in this life. Uh, we are required to believe in the Creator and be conscious of Him, regard Him, obey Him without seeing Him. That is mentioned in multiple places in the Quran. الَّذِينَ يَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَيْبِ They fear their Lord uh, while in a state of not seeing Him. So many things that the faith relies upon, many of the articles of faith are unseen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is unseen. The angels are unseen. The uh, punishment of Allah in the next life, the next life, the total entirety of the next life is something that is unseen. Nobody has come back to us from the next life and told us there's uh, fire, uh, hellfire, or there's paradise. So. A person should be ready to believe in the unseen because that is, this is basic logic and common sense. This is how Allah has created us, ready to uh, acquire metaphysical concepts. We human beings are, have this quality of being able to um, acquire these metaphysical concepts and believe in and believe things that we cannot perceive. We are different from animals. So if someone insists that I will only be a materialistic person, then basically is blocking his heart and mind and soul from the guidance of the Quran. That is very important. So a person to be guided by the Quran, he should or she should, number one, be concerned about his fate. He should be from the muttaqin. He should have some kind of fear or concern. And number two, he should be ready to believe in the unseen. And then uh, that person also should have some good qualities as well that uh, he establishes the prayer, yuqimun as-salah. That is, he wants to establish the connection with his Lord. That he's also kind to fellow human beings. He's kind to all the creation of God. So these good qualities uh, are what qualifies the person to receiving the guidance from Allah. And this is the first statement in the whole Quran that if you want guidance, you are seeking guidance. And this is what Surah Al-Fatiha has taught us. And then you have to have these qualities to receive the guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the first couple of ayat, the first few ayat, uh, the first uh, six verses basically, um, talk about the people who are guided. And those can be divided according to those ayat to people who come to this guidance from a state of being total polytheists and the other class of those people who are guided those who come to this guidance of Islam from another uh, religion that was revealed by Allah. And those are 
mentioned here وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِمَا أُنزِلْ إِلَيْكَ وَمَا أُنزِلْ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ This is another c- c- class of people who are guided by the Qur'an. They believed in the previous books. They could have been Christians, they could have been Jews. They could have been a follower of one of the ancient books revealed by Allah, whom we cannot really uh, ascertain whether uh, ascertain it's um, uh, whether or not it is a true scripture from Allah, such as the older religions, such as Buddhism or Hinduism, if indeed those religions were revealed. But anyhow, those people who believe Allah's previous books are also eligible for guidance because they have the quality of believing the unseen. And they have the qualities of uh, trying to establish connection, connection with God. They have the quality of uh, trying to be kind to God's creation. And this is what all the previous revelations from God has taught humanity. So the people who are guided by the Quran are people who came to this religion, Islam, from a polytheist background, or they came to the religion of Islam from another a religious background based on another revelation that Allah has sent in the past but has been corrupted. So they are also, uh, if they really are seeking the truth, then the Quran would be a guidance for them as well. Allah says that all these kinds are ala huda min rabbihim. They are upon guidance from their Lord. Which shows that the guidance is not something that a person should boast about. It is a gift and a favor from God. عَلَى هُدًا مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ It comes from the Rabb, comes from the Lord. وَأُولَئِكَ هُمْ الْمُفْلِحُونَ And it is the key for, key, for, key for success. But then after this, and as I mentioned in the uh, previous two videos, where, when I talked about the overview of Surah Al-Baqarah, that the Surah starts with talking about the Qur'an and the attitudes of different people towards it. Just like Surah Al-Fatiha ended with talking about the guidance of Allah, اِهْدِنَ الصَّرَاطِ mustaqim, And then the attitudes of different people towards it, أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ مَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ ضَالِّينَ So after talking about those who are guided, whether it's with their two different categories, Allah talks about those who are misguided, those who disbelieve in the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the unbelievers, the rejecters of the truth. And again, they're also classified into two kinds, the uh, clear, uh, the open, and um, the people who are outwardly express their disbelief; those are the clear kuffar, the clear unbelievers. And those, the second class, is, is those who actually um, claim to be believers, but internally they disbelieve in the uh, the revelation of Allah. So those are the hypocrites. So the following ayah talks about in uh, the kafaru, those who have disbelieved, the outward unbelievers, the open, the clear cut unbelievers or disbelievers, that their hearts are sealed because they have insisted on rejecting the truth from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the link between this verse and the previous is that the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah is uh, talking about the classification of different people towards the Qur'an, but also because the Qur'an stated in the very beginning that it is a guidance for people. So someone may ask, so why are the, those unbelievers not accepting the uh, Qur'an? Allah indicated in this verse that the tools that are needed to receive the guidance from God are, are mal- malfunctioning. They are sealed. Their hearts, which are required for uh, the heart, of course, here refers to the mind and the intellect, which is required for analysis and to ponder upon the signs of Allah, is sealed, are sealed. And their sight, which are required to look around and see those signs, they're also covered and their ears are also sealed. And this is because of their insistence on rejecting the guidance from God. In other verses of the Quran, Allah shows us that this kind of state that they are in, that God has sealed their hearts, 
and has placed a veil on their eyes and has made, have, has made them hard of hearing his uh, admonition in his revelation is because of their evil doing. If we go to chapter 4 of the Quran, verse 155, Allah mentions the reasons that he would seal the hearts of people. He says, فَبِمَا نَقْدِهِمْ مِيثَاقَهُمْ Because of the, them breaking their covenant with Allah. وَكُفْرِهِمْ بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ And their rejection of the signs of Allah. وَقَتْلِهِمُ الْأَنْبِيَاءَ بِغَيْرَ حَقِّ that These verses were specifically talking about people who rejected and fought the prophets and even slayed the prophets according to this verse. وَقَوْلِهِمْ قُلُوبُنَا غُلْفِ And they're just saying that our hearts are sealed. They're pretending that they do not understand the signs of Allah while the signs are so clear. But they are just arrogant. And they outwardly reject those signs while those signs are so convincing internally, but they outwardly insist on rejecting them. When they do that, they are punished by Allah, that Allah indeed seals their hearts and their, uh, their hearing and their eyes and their sight from seeing those signs in reality. They actually cease to see them anymore. At one point, those signs were very convincing and very touching and did move them on the inside and did convince them. But when they insisted on going against them and rejecting them, Allah sealed them. Inshallah, we'll stop here. Now we, are, we have stopped at the first class of those disbelievers. After Allah talked about the two different categories of the believers, the guided people, Allah then talked about the, those people who are uh, misguided, those people who have rejected the truth, and he classified them into uh, clear outward disbelievers and the other class is the hypocrites who um, show that they are believers pretend to be believers but on the inside they are disbelievers we will talk about them in the coming video thank you very much for watching